G'day there, you're watching the Aussie Bem Guru. Today I've got a really quick promotional video. I'm um, just to discuss one of the new products on my online store at Bim Guru. Um, so I'm gonna be discussing my columns and beam pack and just quickly demonstrating to you what you have in the pack and how it works and maybe why you might be interested in purchasing it. Um, so this is my work um, versus my play. So yes, I'm promoting something that's outside of the typical Aussie Bim Guru video cycle. Um, so, you know, try not to get too worried about that. Um, but I'm just announcing that I've released two content packs to my online store. So the purpose is just to show you quickly how you can purchase and then just demonstrate the contents if, for, for those that are wondering what it actually looks like and what, 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 what it contains. And then just discuss briefly some future products coming up as well. Please note that you don't have to buy this content. Some people have asked me, should I buy this if I want to support you? Um, the answer is no. Buy it if you want it to support, to support yourself or your business. Um, yeah, don't feel pressured to buy it just because you like my content, but maybe maybe it might help you or your company in setting up some higher quality content for your business. Um, so the pricing of each pack is $40 currently. Um, for one week, I am offering 25% off, so at $30 each. Um, and I'm not planning any future discounts um, at the moment just because um, it's fairly cheap as it is. So I'm just sharing it because I want the industry to improve. And I think one way that this can be done is by sharing content um, at a more accessible price um, to more people around the world. And so far I've seen a lot of people around the world purchasing my content, which is great. Um, I, I did expect Australia would be where a majority of my sales are, but I'm quite surprised that Europe is actually my, my largest market so far, um, by a fair way as well, and not just the UK, um, all over Europe. So it's great to see that BIM is really picking up all around the world and things like this are generating more interest as a result. So you can purchase it on, on my website um, if you click on the store button. And then there'll be a couple of products you can click on and view the descriptions of. Um, and then from there, you can add them to your cart. Uh, you will need a, a profile on the website, so an account, um, just so you can actually make the purchase. Um, but what do you get in each one? Well, you get some structural column or some structural framing families, about 21 to 22. Um, you also get some profile families in both packs. You get the same profile families, um, depending which pack you buy. Um, obviously the beams and the columns don't come in each other's packs as well. So that's why I've separated them. But the profiles are essentially the same structural profiles that are used within um, these steel elements. So you do get access to um, the, the underlying profiles that you can use in like model in place, for example. There's a lot of other content available. So feel free to check that out. I have a template and some support files. Um, and coming soon in future, there's a lot more exciting content to come. A lot of it coming later is what I call assembly content. So things like workstations and toilet cubicles. Well, I'm just gonna quickly demonstrate the content to you just to show you what it contains and maybe why you might be interested in, in purchasing the content. So I'm just gonna quickly show you, uh, in this case, I'll just start off with maybe, maybe the, um, the structural framing. So each pack um, typically comes with a few subfolders. Uh, so that both of them come broken into in-situ elements, precast elements, heavy steel, and light steel. So there'll be one or two uh, concrete beams or concrete columns. Um, in the case of the concrete framing, there's only just a rectangular beam. Um, in the case of the precast, you get a couple of um, step beams. So you've got an L-shaped beam and a T-shaped beam. In the case of the columns, um, you get a few more things. So if I go back to columns and situ, you get a rectangular, a round, and a square column, um, and you have an optional bevel that can be applied um, to both columns, but it's optional, doesn't have to be applied. And in this case, I think there's just one. Uh, no, there's two precast columns, rectangular and square with bevel. As well as that, you also get um, heavy steel and light steel. So light steel is typically what I'm calling um, light gauge steel. So this is like structural Cs or structural, structural Zs or unequal angles or equal angles. And you might immediately notice, so I'm trying to make my thumbnails a little bit more friendly so that you can tell what you're gonna load before you load it. And I've just done that by cropping the, thumb the thumbnail of the family view so you can really clearly see what the profile is that you're gonna load. Um, as well as that, same with the heavy steel as well. So you can see more common heavy profiles here, like um, structural T's and circular hollow sections and PF parallel flange channels. RHS, SHS, um, and all sorts of UB uh, variants of a profile such as um, tapered, tapered flange beams and 
universal columns, world of columns, world of beams, all sorts. Um, so let's just quickly explore one of these families. Maybe I'll just have a look at my, hmm, maybe my, my square hollow section. And I'll just open up this column. So immediately um, you will notice there's probably a little bit more information here than what you usually see. Each, uh, each member has been told what their section, section shape is and also the material for the model behavior as well. And all of the geometry will typically have subcategories applied to it. So you have control over the heavy light or concrete elements in the project as well. Um, and you can obviously filter for things as well to achieve this. In the type properties, um, there's quite a lot of information. Obviously there's authoring data. Um, also just the structural material, which I've typically made a type parameter. Um, I found that usually making this an instance parameter isn't necessary. Usually you just want one steel. You could obviously make this an instance parameter if you wanted to, if you wanted to put things like paint finishes on your steel, or sometimes galvanized finish, sometimes not. Uh, but I found sometimes it's better to manage this as a different type anyway. Um, typically there's a set of structural steel parameters for the size of the element. Um, for example, things like B, H, and inner root and inner and root radiuses, and also flange and web thicknesses. So if you're a structural engineer, you'll probably understand more about what these dimensions mean. Um, I've tried to avoid using just generic dimensions like width and depth because these are more relevant to what the structural profile size actually is. And these are typically connected to the structural section geometry parameters, which come from the, um, the section type that's been specified. So you do have quite a lot of information in here as well. Um, I've also added the IFC export as and type parameters in all the families as well. So they will export as at least very least the right type and um, the right right category um, or class, I think they call it. Um, and I've added just a bit of coding data as well. Now you'll notice most of it's locked down. The reason I do this is because these are sort of intended for use by architectural people. Typically, um, you could use this as a structural engineer, obviously, uh, but typically if you're an architect and you're placing structural steel in a model, you're usually placeholding. So you don't want to specify too much about the element. So usually if you're going to code this element, it's just going to tell you it's a column which means refer to structural engineers drawings or model for specification. There is still a secondary parameter where the specific type is available, but you do have to more intentionally code that field just to be safe. Um, there's also a lot of types inside um, all the families. So in this case, you can see there's quite a lot of different sizes available. These have all been based on a website called SteelWeb. So in this case, um, SteelWeb is quite a, quite a thorough website. It does have a lot of types available on it. I believe the sizes are based on Australia. Um, so you may not have as much relevance depending where you are in the world, but most of these sizes are quite generic from what I understand. Um, so all the sizes you see on steelweb.info um, are available in this, in this family as well. And there's quite a thorough collection um, available here. And I've, I've made pretty much all the, all the sizes you can see here, except for the bar sections in this case. So if you do go to like a C section, for example, um, I've made all of these C and sizes, um, so pretty, pretty handy and pretty thorough. Um, and obviously, if you load these into a project, they're going to behave like you know any other column or beam would. Uh, but they also have more information in them than usual. So I can just make this a height beam, and I can place this SHS, and it's pretty, pretty standard. Behaves like you'd expect an SHS would. And also, I can change the size to different ones. I can pick like an 89 by six, and I've got an 89 by six. Um, but otherwise, you're really looking at just like a standard, a standard structural section, um, but obviously with a lot more, a lot more type data than what you usually have available, and some special fields that might help you as well. Um, but we've also got obviously structural framing families as well, um, obviously precast framing too. But we also have those same profiles available as framing families as well. So you have beams um, that are pretty much set up almost exactly the same way when it comes to type data. So you can see really they're almost the same setup in this case, um, the same same sizing fields, same coding fields, except for the fact that it's a beam, not a column. Um, so you'll get a very thorough uh, type catalog across your beams and your columns, which I know a lot of companies really struggle with, um, and also just getting a consistent set of structural elements. And also you have um, structural uh, light gauge steel. So in this case, these are things like C purlins, Z purlins, unequal angles and equal angles. And you have a lot of sizes available for these as well from SteelWeb. So you have all the sizes of Zs um, that SteelWeb has available. So pretty handy, hopefully. Um, and the last thing you do yet is those, those profiles. So these, these are actually profile families. Um, so you could use these in a model in place. So for example, this one here um, has a lot of different sizes available, all the C sizes. 
Um, I haven't used shared parameters because profiles don't really benefit from shared parameters um, because they don't really get treated as a nested element in a family anyway. They sort of just drop off once you go to the project level. But I could load this in. Um, so each family actually has a type catalog available to support it, which is really important um, for things with a lot of types. So if I just go to load one of these profiles, you'll notice there's all these little TXT files and they essentially provide a list when you go to load one. Let's just load in a C and you can see I get this little type catalog. So if I know I just need one type, I don't have to load all of these sizes in, so I don't need to waste a lot of size of the model. And also just makes it easier to navigate your browser, obviously, as well. So I could use this in a model in place if I needed to. So if I needed to, to model a structural, structural framing in place, and I wanted to model a sweep, I should now have this profile available to pick from. And somewhere in here, there'll be that steel section available for me. Um, that I can use as, as an element to guide. So even if you don't have you know, a proper beam, like say you're doing a curved beam, you can use these profiles as well to achieve the same consistent size at the very least in, in your modeling. So hopefully um, you like what you saw there and maybe it, it interests you. Um, feel free to reach out with any questions if you have them. I'm more than happy to take them. Um, so far the content's been selling really well. I'm really happy with how it's going. Getting a lot of great feedback. Um, all positive, of course, which is brilliant. And I think a lot of people are really excited just to have um, some families that they can rely on uh, over some of the other places that we know probably aren't quite as reliable. Um, so thanks for all your support so far, and there's a lot more to come. Um, this presentation will be on GitHub, um, obviously not the families themselves, they're on my store. Um, so if you're not already following and subscribing to my channel, um, feel free to do so. Not all my videos are promotional, um, in fact, very few of them are. Most of them are related to Dynamo and Revit, so if you're new to my channel, feel free to go and check those videos out and see what you think. And if you've got any comments or feedback, feel free to leave it down below, and I look forward to seeing you in future videos. Thanks. Take care. Bye.